all right guys so pretty much i'm gonna be going over everything that i bought in for the past month um you know i do apologize for the noise some guys are i guess they're starting to build houses or something like that but um yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and start off with the left then make my way to the right so let's go ahead and get to it so this is my third marine vietnam t-shirt they did make t-shirts but they did make sweaters more commonly both are extremely rare you don't really see too many for sale but you do see quite a bit in photos of that kind but really neat um i'm probably gonna be adding this to my late war marine kit but um yeah super cool this is a reproduction made from some guy on ebay i i might give you guys the name if you really um if a few guys are interested I'm, i'll give you guys the name but um yeah so real neat really happy with my purchase i think i actually only spent like maybe around like 20 bucks so really cool above that is what i could describe as a pullover i guess jacket it's not really a jacket it doesn't have a hoodie uh it's honestly just a big v-neck and there's no buttons of any sort um pretty much to my uh, conclusion is this was pretty much just used for camouflage purposes obviously but um you know it's in pretty good condition it does look super like salty but you know take my word for it uh, it's literally like the inside is like unthreading itself if that makes sense like there's stitching all around it and for whatever reason they didn't stitch the extra material so that's kind of what's happening like if I put it on you wouldn't even really tell but still really cool I found that actually at a, um, a furniture store out of all places and it, you know it was an antique furniture store bear in mind but um, still really cool and I uh, only spent like I think five bucks super cheap price and um, you do actually see these made um, I haven't seen any made like not really made um I haven't really seen any of these like in Vietnam like in the field and stuff but I have seen quite a bit of photos of guys finding these like relic finds like they bought them from a vet or something like that and they're all in a similar like style like I think some of them might have a hoodie some of them might have a zipper but primarily they're all in this style so really cool glad that i picked this up you know but yeah guys there's that above that is i guess another parachute camo related thing um to my conclusion this is pretty much what the marines wore in 1968 during the um the uh, i guess tet offensive uh really neat this jacket is almost exact to what you know i see in photos of that sort um the one that i reproduced was you know it pretty much had buttons this one has a zipper so it's really cool to see that kind of variety in them um but yeah the collars are the same the hoodies are the same um just the overall i guess like style to it you know it's really cool i'm happy that i picked this up i actually saw this at a thrift store out of all places and um i actually searched the entire thrift store to see if there were some you know other military related items you know boots pants that kind of thing and I couldn't find anything else other than the dress uniform that was dated 1972. But still, really cool piece. This is my size and all that. And I'm not entirely sure what the date is on the camo. I really don't know anything about these camos. Like, you know, I know they were used in World War II, but, you know, I don't, I don't really know the difference between the Korean War ones and the World War II ones, if that makes sense. But, yeah, super sweet. Glad I picked this up. And, uh, yeah. So, on the bottom is my pretty much a majority of my personal items uh, i'm gonna start off with the toothbrush this toothbrush is actually from the 90s and uh, it was brand new so i'm gonna plan on i do plan on like using this and stuff but super sweet and you know glad i picked that up uh two government pens um really interesting not entirely sure if these were used in vietnam i assume they were but I plan on using them, you know, like throwing them on my uniform or something similar to that. But super sweet that I found that. I think I only spent like a dollar. I spent like nine dollars on this toothbrush, which is, which is honestly kind of expensive. But I mean, it was the cheapest one, I guess. But yeah, there's that. Here's two World War II battle dressings. I really like the graphics on this. Um, super cool. Like, I don't know. It's just the whole coloring for something that, you know, I don't know. For a bandage, it looks really neat. But, uh, you know, these are World War II bandage battle dressings. And uh, normally they're in like a wax dip cardboard box. But, um, you know, the way I found them, they didn't have the uh, cardboard boxes on them. So still really neat. And um, 
I picked them up as a bundle. I think there was there's three of them. I left one in like my World War II um, Marine kit or something like that. But I bought three of them, and they also came. It also came with a um, Jungle First Aid that was mostly filled up. And the reason why I say mostly is that like it was missing like three things. And I would have had it out in this display, or I would have had it out out here. But the reason why I haven't is it's honestly super sticky. Like the entire outside of the uh, Jungle First State is super sticky and just like feels very di like I don't know like stained. And my assumption is that the guy told me that he bought like crates full of Jungle First Dates in like the 50s, and some of them had morphine and stuff, and he had to like call the government to pick them up. But anyways, um, I assume that a neighboring, uh, a neighboring insect repellent might have broke, you know, broke and spilt all over my jungle first day and probably on a few other ones. But um, I plan on just kind of cleaning it prior to like using it and stuff. So that's why I don't have it out here. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if that shit is like cancerous. I heard some people say that it is, but then I read some like forum on like. I don't know on Google pretty much and they said that it wasn't cancerous and I'm you know I'm not gonna risk it but yeah overall pretty interesting I guess but yeah so the right of that is a just 60s wallet this is real psychedelic looking slash Western looking uh, it just has like a whole bunch of uh, I guess leaves but super cool and I plan on adding this to my impression um, I guess a little bit more to the right of that it's pretty much everything I bought from like a travel kit. Uh, I believe it's 50s dated, not entirely sure. The reason why I say it's 50s dated is it actually has um, the guy's wife on it. So I thought that was really interesting. The reason why I picked up a travel kit is I've actually seen a couple of photos of Marines using the um, travel kit mirrors. Like um, I've seen a guy with this, this pretty much exact mirror and uh, really neat. I'm, I don't really know if guys were issued, I guess, like personal effects kits or whatever, but um, not really personal effects kits, but you, get, you know what I mean, like, you know, stuff like this. I, I really don't know if guys were issued that, and I assumed that maybe they were given just civilian ones or maybe they had to buy their own, but yeah, overall, really interesting. I'm going to be adding this to my kit, and you know, these little, these plastic things hold your stuff, I guess, and it came with like a boot boot brush and then you know some glass bottle that I might find a use for but real neat and then something I completely skipped over was my uh, original Vietnam War tape um, you know I'm, I plan on using this pretty much for I guess my army impression alongside with maybe a special force impression in the future but still really neat and uh, that pretty much got lost in the mail, and it finally showed up, so I figured might as well show it off. But real neat. Above that is my cigarette cases. These are both from the 60s. They came in as a pair. You know, they match and all that. This one has a chick on it, and, you know, for obvious reasons, I kind of censored it. And then, you know, there's that one. And overall, really neat, and uh, I'm really glad with my purchase. Or really happy with my purchase, I mean. To the right of that is a Korean War canteen. You know, there's the price I paid for it. And you know, it's 53 dated. You never really see Korean War canteens. And so that's the main reason why I picked this one up is, you know, it's just, they're just so rare, honestly. But to the right of that canteen is a 1942 dated enamel canteen. And these go for a lot of money, like around 70 bucks on average. And, uh, um, you know, I picked this one up for, I think the price is there actually. I guess not, I picked this one up for around like $49, somewhere around there. But uh, super cool, I'm gonna be adding this to my uh, marine kit I guess, but yeah. Above those is a browning, um, not browning, bar cleaning kit. Um, I might do a bar impression in the distant future. And um, I actually saw three of these when I was going to my local antique stores. I saw one of these in one antique store, then I went to the next one, there was another one, and then when I went to um, this gun store, they there was another one. So you know, I asked them how much they wanted for it, they wanted like nine bucks for it, so I paid for it. Uh, it's empty, and I wanna say the date is right here, it says 
1942, but super neat and um, happy with my purchase, I guess. But yeah, here is a mess kit. This is 1942 dated, and it's my earliest um, mess kit that I own. Uh, this was pretty much given to me as a gift, and I only spent three dollars on it. At my local antique store, they pretty much know me pretty well. And uh, this guy literally bought this kit, this mess kit because he knew I'd be interested in it. So he gave it to me for probably what he paid for. And uh, that was really nice of him. But I'm going to be adding that to my uh, marine impression. So, you know, now I have two mess kits, which is really cool. All right, so here's something pretty interesting. And, um, you know, this is a mint M41 lower. But what's really cool about it is that it's 72 dated you guys can see that i'm pretty sure you do but it's 72 dated which is very um i don't know that's pretty unheard of i've never seen one dated so late so it's just kind of neat seeing that i do plan on using this for my early war impression and pretty much you know these look exactly the same as the ones that are made you know in the early stages of vietnam so um yeah super sweet that i found that i've been wanting to buy a um you know haversack lower for the longest time never got to it and uh, you know, finally picked one up, so real happy about that. And I guess here's another haversack. This is the um, World War II one. You know, it has a flap, it has the square buckles and all that. But um, this one, you know, this one's pretty, this one's like marked up quite a bit. It actually has, I think three names, you know, there's another one. And then I think this is a different name. I'm not entirely sure. Like the reason why I say it's a different name is um, this portion right here. I can't really read it, but I guess this is like invasion markings right here. Uh, really interesting. Please let me know if you guys can like, you, if you know what branch that is. Like, I know this is a Marines pack, but what I mean is like, you know, was this guy in like the third Marines or something like that, you know? Like the different units use different um, colors or some shit like that. But yeah, really neat. I spent 45 bucks on it, so super cool. And I couldn't find a date on it on the inside or anything like that. So that's kind of a shame, but overall, really sweet. Below that is my first pattern, M67, I guess, web belt. Um, real sweet. You never really see the first patterns that much. Um, mostly the second patterns that have nylon, you know, the nylon belt. But real happy that I picked that up. I've seen a couple guys wearing these. Um, the story goes that they were issued to the Navy SEALs and the Navy SEALs hated them and so they kind of just turned up on the, uh, I guess like on the PX and so other guys personally bought these. And um, yeah, I've seen a Marine with one of them. I've also seen quite a bit of Army guys wearing them, um, but still really cool. And uh, yeah, here's a, to my knowledge, a World War I um, wet belt. Um, the reason why I say it's a World War One is the guy was telling me he told me it was a World War One, one. But um, he pointed out that the World War One actually had like a real thick, I guess, buckle. So there's that, and it's made out of brass, or like the uh, the eyelids are made out of brass, which I guess makes sense because you know the World War in World War Two, you know, brass was kind of a valuable piece of metal for you know bullets and that kind of thing. But real sweet. So here is my USMC canteen cover. It's dated 1952. Uh, these are pretty rare. They were only made, I think, in 52 and 53. And, you know, primary late Korea. Not entirely sure if they were seen in Korea or if they were used in Korea. Um, you know, you, if you guys, if you guys like, kind of know, like, gear st knowledge, um, mostly stuff wasn't issued the year of. Usually it was, like, the next year. So there's a chance that this was actually issued out, which would be really cool. But uh, more than likely... It's probably was seen in Vietnam, but yeah. Right next to it is another Korean War related item. This is a, um, you know, pile cap. Um, these are pretty rare, not really rare. The, um, the ones with the fur on the front are actually really rare. And um, I was happy that I picked one up in my size. And for such a good price, I think it was like, I don't know, I think it was like nine bucks. I took the tagging off some of this stuff by mistake. But, um, yeah, really cool. Happy that I picked it up. And, you know, I picked up a good chunk of this stuff. I picked, I think, these three items up from the same antique store. So that was really sweet. Um, the antique store that I went to was out of town. It's like a 
a good while, it's like a good while away. And um, I assume that a lot of veterans live there because they have a lot of World War II related stuff alongside with like Korean stuff, but super sweet. Below that, this actually came from the same town, different antique store though. Uh, this is like a, um, like a custom bayonet pretty much. This is a, uh, I think, I believe this is a, I'm trying to think, like, I think it's an M7 bayonet. I think that's the proper name. Um, I've tried like really looking at this knife and um, it's been heavily modified like I thought maybe it was an M5 bayonet you know the Korean War ones and just heavily customized like the um, you know the uh, the grips were changed you know that kind of shit but I couldn't really you know confirm that so just to my conclusion is it's just a customized M7 bayonet but you know they added this uh, Oh, man, I can't think of the name. I'm probably going to make you guys cringe. But, you know, they added this portion here. They actually serrated that upper half. Hopefully you guys can see that. Yeah, they serrated that. It's actually still kind of sharp. And I also assume that there's actually blood stains on it. Not entirely sure this could be rust marks. But some of it looks very, like, water-ish, if that makes sense. You know, like, there's just, like, I don't know. But, yeah real sweet um i do plan on you know using this for my impression and you know there's a uh, imperial markings but yeah if you guys can identify this bayonet as like maybe it was uh it's like a korean war one or something like that please let me know that'd be really interesting but yeah and it also fits the um you know the bayonet i guess holster or sheath i guess but super cool Oh, and you know, the reason why I say that is, you know, the uh, the sheath didn't come with the bayonet. It came separately. I already had one. So, you know, I tested it out and it fits. So, I guess just throwing that out there. Um, I think the two final things is the uh, M56 shovel. These are stupid expensive. I don't know why they're so expensive. Uh, this one is, hopefully, I'm just going to have it backwards, I guess. This is, you know, uh, 65 dated. And, you know, again, I really don't know why these are so much money. Um, they're pretty average shovels, I guess. Um, I spent, I think, around 40 bucks for it. You know, I was going for one that actually had a good majority of paint. And this one's pretty fine. But if you guys are worried about having or buying one that has no paint on it, there are guys, like, I've seen out in the field with, with literally no paint on the shovels. So, you know, I guess just keep that in mind. You know, don't really be too self-conscious about that. But... You know, I really wanted one that had paint on it, so, you know, managed to find this, and overall, pretty happy with my purchase. And then finally is my um, sewing kit. This is a World War II sewing kit, to my knowledge. This could be World War I, but um, I will be using this for my marine impression. And um, I would have opened it up, but, you know, all the contents are kind of just thrown everywhere, if that makes sense. But, you know, I don't really want to, like, I don't know. But... Yeah, you know, I just kind of decided to leave it closed, but pretty much, guys, this is my stuff that I bought for the entire month. Um, I think something that I'm missing is my M16, not M16, my, um, I bought some more M60 links, and I just decided not to bring them out because they're in the garage, and uh, just kind of a pain in the ass to pick them out. And then another thing is um, some ranking that I, uh, I actually lost. I don't know where they went. But I bought some like private ranking alongside with some jump wings and uh, I couldn't really find those anywhere but you know I guess that would have been there if it was here but yeah guys this is pretty much uh, everything I bought for the past month um, do let me know um, I guess go ahead and let's take a vote would you guys rather me make a marine impression or a mid-war army impression uh, my, my marine impression is gonna be late war so 70 to 71 so uh, just leave it down in the comments and uh, just let me know, I guess. I'm really debating whether or not to finish my, you know, mid-war army impressions. It's going to be the 173rd. But um, just let me know if you guys are more interested in the marine impression or the army impression. I guess let's just go ahead and take a vote. But yeah, guys, I'll go ahead and catch you later.